Last video of this sequence will be about derivative of inverse trigonometric functions. To work with those problems, you need to learn these formulas. We actually require you to remember only the first four arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, and arc cotangent. The other two will show up later in Calculus 2 class when we're gonna start integrating stuff. So I just remember that arc sine. And our cosine both have square roots in a denominator and both have one minus input squared. The difference is that cosine is negative. For arctangent and arc cotangent, I remember that they're both positive in denominator and they have no square roots. But again, cotangent gives you negative. So it kind of makes sense to see them as couples, positive, negative, positive, negative. Look the same, look the same, but uh, only negative sign is different. The most important, what I usually like to mention is, see this not as x, see it as an input. And I would say it many times, input squared, input squared. That will change the way you integrate and it will prevent to do mistakes. Let's see what I mean. Arc cosine x to the 4, if I want to differentiate that, y prime becomes arc cosine or cosine minus 1. So again, this is not 1 over cosine, not the same thing. Cosine minus 1 is a notation for arc cosine. Derivative of arc cosine is, I can say it is negative 1 all over a huge square root and then 1 minus input squared. 1 minus input squared. What is my input? x to the 4. So it becomes 1 minus x to the 4 squared. And this is the most important part here not to forget about. Input squared. Then, don't forget chain rule times. I'm looking at the function inside and need to differentiate this function. Derivative of that function is 4x cubed. The answer becomes the answer becomes negative 4x cubed in the numerator and then a square root 1 minus x to the 8 in the denominator. Does this make sense? Not too bad if you do it carefully step by step. If you lost a little piece, please watch carefully and see where the mistake could happen. Keep going. For the second one, tangent without looking at the table I remember tangent doesn't have a square root in the denominator and it has addition in the denominator so it's 1 over 1 plus input squared but my input is a fraction several ways to see it either you see it as a fraction or I would rewrite it with the green color first as arctangent 2 times x to the negative 3 do you all agree it's the same x to the negative 3 is the same as 1 over x cubed. So it becomes 2 over x cubed. Then y prime becomes derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus input squared. But what is my input? 2x to the negative 3 squared. Makes sense? We are going to have to calculate this later times chain rule says now look inside and differentiate the piece inside derivative of the function inside is negative 6x to the decrease the exponent negative 4. you see how i put the second part of the chain rule into numerator right away to make notation easier we can simplify this as negative 6x to the negative 4 1 plus 4 because 2 squared. Well, I will write down it really fast for you to know where you should not make a mistake. It's the same as 2 squared times x to the negative 3 squared. Do you all agree on this? Squared can be distributed to those two factors. So the answer becomes negative 6x to the negative 4 1 plus 4 
x, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Finally, we can simplify. We actually could leave it like this, but I can see that the answer doesn't have any negative exponents, which means they multiplied everything by x with the uh, exponent 6. See, if I multiply the top by x to the 6 and the bottom by x to the 6, it will get rid of the all negative exponents because I'm multiplying by the smallest, by the x with the smallest exponent everywhere. Negative 6 times x. x negative 4 plus 6 becomes 2. You add those exponents. Now, 1 times x to the 6 is x to the 6 plus 4 x to the negative 6 times x to the 6 is 1. So this is the answer. I personally think that both answers are good. Next example, I would differentiate right away because arc sine gives me 1 over a huge square root. One, it's not huge, I just like saying it, but you don't have to. 1 minus input squared, so it's going to be e to the x squared, times the derivative of the function inside. What is the function inside? e to the x, so it's going to be e to the x in the numerator. There's basically nothing to simplify except that at the denominator I can have 1 minus e to the 2x because e to the x squared is e to the 2x. Keep going. Two more examples left. y prime is arc cosine. I remember it's negative. I'll put negative in front of the fraction. Negative a square root 1 minus input squared. But what is my input? 2 plus x. 2 plus x squared. Squared because of the formula of the derivative of the arc cosine. And the negative in front, don't forget. Times the derivative of the function inside. The function inside is 2 plus x. What is derivative of 2 plus x? 0 plus 1. This is a good answer. But I can see that we can simplify this answer by writing down negative 1 all over 1 minus. And I'll use the formula of the square of sum. Square the first term plus double product of the first and the second term plus square the second term. Distribute uh, the negative sign and simplify. Negative 1 over 1 minus 4 becomes negative 3 minus 4x minus x squared. And this is the answer. We are almost there. Last example. I see some product rule. You can either factor out 9 and see if product rule as x times arc sine, or you can see 9x times arc sine x. Both are good. I can see that in the answer they factored out 9, so we can do that as well, why not? But I always tell you, you don't have to match the answer, you are doing great. Learn the way you understand, and this is the best way of it. Just make sure it's correct. u times v, 9, and then the product rule. Derivative of x is 1, copy arc sine, arc sine of x, plus copy x, times derivative of arc sine. I remember that arc sine is 1 over a huge square root, 1 minus input squared. Input is x, so it's just x squared. Derivative of the function inside is just derivative of x. Derivative of x is 1. So this is the answer. The only thing which I personally don't like is this x in front. I like putting it in the top because it saves space. And this is the final answer of the final product of the whole list of derivatives we did. So I think now you mastered the differentiation if you can do all of these 45 examples by yourself without making a mistake. Also, I would recommend you to practice to be fast because if you will have these problems on the test, 
I would say when you will have these problems in the test, you will be expected to do these differentiations fast. But I'm pretty sure you will do good, so have fun at home practicing it. And the most important, stay positive if you keep making mistakes. Keep rewriting them. At some point, you'll be as good as all of us. So stay positive and keep practicing. Good job.